Welcome to Security Architecture Podcast, where we help cybersecurity professionals to stay ahead of the curve and ensure they are successful in their cybersecurity journey. Hi, I'm Evgeny. Hi, I'm Dimitri. We have here Jin from Google. Can you please introduce yourself and the company? Hey, everyone. Hey, uh, my name is Jin Zen. I'm a product manager at Google and uh, specifically working on a solution called Beyond Corp Enterprise. You know, I've been in the industry for a while now. Uh, obviously, in, uh, in the industry, security industry, uh, previous to Google, I was uh, spent a bunch of time at, uh, at a company I founded, which is uh, called Trustpath, doing inline malware analysis. And also, before that, I was a SVP of products at a company called Endgame, which is an EDR solution. And uh, let's start with our first question. What's the name of the offering or the product that's addressing the remote access by Beyond Corp? Yeah, so this is a great question. Um, so the product is called Beyond Corp Enterprise. It is um, our solution, Google's solution that we have based on a lot of the base, uh, capabilities that we have uh, built over the past 10 years um, and really kind of productizing it, packaging it, really kind of bring it out to the, to the market and help our enterprise customers kind of secure their remote access needs as well. So uh, it's based on the Beyond Corp architecture. Uh, the product itself is called Beyond Corp Enterprise. So we are a podcast about architecture and we really want to dive in to Google architecture. And it's probably going to be very interesting because we spoke with many vendors that they use Google architecture or Google Cloud as well. So we're really eager to learn about how you guys do it. Yeah, so let's talk about, let's dive into that, right? Uh, so, you know, Google obviously have been in the zero trust and, and build out the zero trust architecture for a long while now. It's since, the, since 2009, when Operation Aurora kind of happened, a lot of companies got uh, hacked, right? So Google really kind of took a step back and started relook, you know, relook at all the security uh, you know, architecture and the posture and whatnot to really kind of understand exactly what we can do to improve that. So the result of that is what Google calls the Beyond Corp architecture. And you can see a lot of that paper um, that's published by Google out in, on the internet. Um, and it talks about Beyond Corp and how do you provide access? How do you provide you know, device inventory and eventually a clean, uh, healthy fleet, right? That's all part of Beyond Corp. Now, when we package the solution, we uh, essentially are uh, focusing on really kind of understanding how enterprises would leverage some uh, uh, something like Beyond Corp. So let me let me share uh, maybe a, um, a a quick slide uh, to, to show exactly what that looked like. We are focused about architecture, and we really want to know how you guys design your architecture. Many other vendors use public clouds and different clouds, and many other vendors also use GCP as their backbone for the products. So we really want to learn what you guys did and how you guys use Google Cloud. Yeah, no, that's a great question, right? So when we built Beyond Corp, we really try to uh, look at the different assets that Google has and really trying to understand how we can make it super easy for customers to be able to adopt this type of solution, uh, especially when it comes to zero trust. You know, zero trust is really a journey for a lot of companies. You start and there's a lot of steps that you can take and really kind of to make it make it better. So we look at Google and really look at understand kind of how we can leverage our assets here. So at a high level, if you look at the architecture, right, from the left, you have a bunch of users, right? Your employees, your contractors, your partners, they're trying to access resources and applications on the right, whether it's hosted in the cloud, like GCP or AWS, whatever the case might be. Uh, if they're maybe SaaS applications, maybe internal applications that are sitting on-prem, right? All these resources that you have and you need users to be able to access them. So how do you make it super simple and super easy, right? So from Google's perspective, when we launched Beyond Corp Enterprise, there are really three things from an architecture perspective that we talk about. One is on the endpoint. You know, in, in most cases, when you're talking about remote access, you need to install VPN client, you need to install some agent that record, you know, would steer traffic. And in Google's case, all you need is a Chrome browser. So what we have done is that we leverage Chrome browser, which is really used by a couple billion users now, 
right? That's already on your system. You probably are already using it. We leverage that as kind of our uh, endpoint agent, if you will, to access the information. Now, second thing is really around network. As you know, Google has one of the biggest networks, most reliable networks out there. And the fact that we have uh, thousands of different edge locations, you know, uh, hundreds of different pops, and we span a couple hundred different countries, right? That allows users to really get onto the Google network very, very quickly, and then transit over to Google network, um, and then get to their resources. And then the third thing is what our, our Google Cloud, right? Google Cloud Platform, where we leverage a lot of our resources to enforce the policies. Right, to understand exactly who this user is, what is the security posture of that device that the user is coming from, and then use that user trust and you know, identity trust and, and device trust to um, control and, and enforce policies. So high level architecture is that we use Chrome as the endpoint, transit over to Google network, and then Google Cloud really is our enforcement point where then you can access and, and uh, all the resources on the on the right. Very simple architecture, three things, not much to it, but it is really the-, the but if the, I want to access an application in Australia, do I go to closest pop and Google network or I go directly to Australia? Do I use the backbone? Tell us about this part. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Let me, I'm gonna actually jump to the next slide uh, just to kind of give you a sense of, the size of the, uh, the Google network, right? So as you can see here, if you're, let's say you are in the US and you're trying to access a resource or an application that's sitting in Australia, right? The first thing that we would do is to get you onto the Google network as quickly and uh, as possible, right? And that would get you onto the pop that's closest to you, right? The edge location that's closest to you. That gets you onto the Google backbone and Google network. And from there, you can see that you can transit over to Google Backbone and go to the Australia, uh, where, wherever that resource might be. And that is you know, where we bring in our advantage as Google is to give you that network um, where you don't have to go over the public internet, where there may be latencies and other stuff. And Google you know, has that, you know, it is really unique to Google in, in this case. So you insert the routing part into the Google Chrome? Basically, it knows where to go if to go to Facebook or to internal application. Yeah, so let's let's take an example, right? You have a you have an on-prem application. You want to be able to access that, right? You have a bunch of contractors or users that needs to be able to access that that resource that's sitting in Australia. What we do is that we would help you publish that application, right, on the Google network um, as an application that you can that's essentially be seen as an application that's hosted by Google, even though it's still sitting in, in your, uh, in your uh, data center. So when we publish that, it's published across the globe, right? So that, that, you know, uh, that essentially application name, you can access it from anywhere. And when your packet is going from your Chrome browser to that application, it is seen as a Google application. So we'll get you on the Google network right away. And from there, Google takes the you know, control of the routing and, and obviously going to all the way to your, uh, to your application. So in that sense, um, we make it look like, we publish the application and make it look like it's coming, you know, a Google application, but then we do the backbone routing, background routing to make sure that you get to the uh, destination as quickly as possible and as reliable as possible, right? Um, you think about, uh, some of the advantages that you know, we, we provide from a Google network perspective, um, the largest DDoS uh, the attack that we have seen is probably around, what, 2.5 terabytes. By us putting your application, by putting Google infrastructure in front of your application, you essentially get the benefit of having that protection. Do you need to have some kind of a proxy connector inside company environment? Yeah, so there's a couple of ways that you can do that. One is obviously uh, we do have a, what we call an on-prem connector as part of this overall uh, Beyond Corp Enterprise solution that essentially connects to your application. Now, there's different things, right? If you, it's already sitting on GCP, Google Cloud Platform, 
there's nothing that you need to do. All you have to do is point to that application. If it's sitting on-prem, we have to have some way of doing secure connectivity to that application. So that's what the on-prem connector is really allow us to do, right? kind of making that secure connection to, uh, to, to, your, to your data center. John, uh, I have a question to you about ZTNA component in the Google Chrome browser. So you mentioned that you have billions of uh, endpoints already running Chrome browser. Do you have a ZTNA code already embedded in the Chrome browser? So it's just ready to connect at any given moment once I enable it? Yeah, so, so we built actually quite a bit of capabilities directly into the Chrome browser. So um, as, as we mentioned earlier, we're leveraging essentially our assets to help make it super easy for users to connect. So when we publish this application on a Google network, and when you try to go to it from a Chrome browser perspective, it's a direct connect, right? I mean, you're just basically connecting to something that's, that's published by Google. And within the browser, what we have done is that we have built in additional capabilities around uh, how to protect these users and the data that's transiting to, uh, through the Chrome browser. So there's not an agent that you have to install to say, hey, you know, I need to now steer traffic to, to some, some other location. It is just the Chrome browser. It's a direct connection from Chrome to Google network and super simple. Now, because we are able to work directly with the Chrome team, we're actually able to provide additional capabilities there where we can say, for example, right, if you're transferring information within the Chrome browser, we can automatically provide you additional protection for that data. And data is really kind of what people are trying to uh, protect, right? You, you provide secure access to that data because you want to protect the data and make sure only the people that are allowed to see it can access it. But when they are allowed to see it, you also want to make sure that they have, um, you know, they're, they're doing the right thing with the set of data, right? They're, they're not transferring that the set of data outside. They're not leaking it. So we have built in a set of capabilities directly into the Chrome browser to provide uh, for example, like malware protection, make sure that you, you know, the employees are not getting malware or, or uploading malware for that matter. Sorry, I just want to clarify. So there is no need to install any additional components, any extension, nothing. It's just already there in my browser and I always can use it uh, whenever I want to enable Beyond Corp. And also you probably will push updates for these components together with the Chrome browser updates. So I'm always running the la latest and the greatest version. I would say there are two things here that we have to think about. Right? One is uh, we do have an extension, right? Um, an extension that we call endpoint verification. Um, and this extension, is, the, the primary purpose of the extension is to collect attributes and signals from your device so that we know whether your device is secure, we know what version of the OS you're running, we know whether uh, you, you're coming from the, from the um, a right, you know, a device that has the right configuration or not, right? And this is also integrated with the Chrome browser because it, it, uh, it's an extension there. All you have to do is deploy that extension. And our customers actually deploy it with, you know, in different ways. Um, you can deploy it using your standard GPO process. You can deploy it with Google's uh, cloud manage Chrome browser cloud management. So all that is automated. So from a user's perspective, there's really nothing that they need to do. You log in to Google and that extension gets deployed automatically, right? So that's a policy that you can configure. And the other pieces like the threat and data protection capabilities that are completely part of the Chrome browser. There's really nothing that you need to install. There's nothing that you need to do anything. Again, as long as your Chrome browser is there, you, know, you can manage the browser policies, right? Then you can enable that. And so when we say we have 2 billion uh, Chrome browsers being used out there, right? That's really what we're talking about. You know, you don't have to install an agent. You just have to use Chrome. And that's interesting that you are using the Chrome browser. How do you license your product? Is it based on seats, based on devices? Let's say I have a mobile phone and I have my PC and I have my uh, laptop. How would you license uh, the solution? Yeah, great question. And, and you know, this is pretty standard practice, right? We, uh, we license it per seat. Uh, meaning you know, on a per user uh, basis. And um, as long as you have a license for the user, you're able to obviously uh, transit the data through our proxies and be able to use the capabilities that we described that are, that are built into Chrome. Uh, so yeah, so it's a, it's a per seat uh, license basis, annual, you know, annual uh, uh, price. 
what we see on the market is a lot of dependency on users and your identity versus source IP. How you address the connection with single, single sign-on MFA user identity to authenticate that you are you and you can actually create rules based on who you are. Great question. And, and that's really kind of where, where Beyond Corp shines. And that's really kind of the, the Beyond Corp model that Google, Google has built, right? It's really based on two things, right? One is your user identity and the context around that user identity. You know, who you are, what uh, authentication method did you come in with, where are you coming from, right? So there's all the context around the user. But then there's also the context around your device. Right? Are you coming from a device that's allowed? Is it coming, you know, is it coming uh, from a device that has the right version of the OS installed? Is it coming from a uh, operating system that has the right configuration, has the se right security settings, right? So there's two sets here, identity, right? User trust and device trust. And the goal here is that you can leverage both of these to build policies that you can enforce and when you're trying to access the application, right? So from an MFA, SSO, obviously, you, you know, Google has provide, you know, through the Google identity products, we provide all the necessary kind of uh, multi-factor authentication, second step of, uh, verification, things like that, that we already have and leveraging that. So for example, one of the things that we, you could say from a policy perspective is that, hey, you know what? This user is trying to access a certain application, let's say a financial services application, right? And in order to access this application, you wanna make sure that the user not only come in with MFA, but you wanna make sure that they come in with a security key, right? So much higher security requirement, right? So if that's the case, if a user just logs in with an MFA, you know, like maybe, I don't know, uh, SMS authentication, then that is not a strong enough authentication mechanism, right? We would deny access to that specific application. Then maybe other applications you're okay with, right? So, so really kind of that's what we mean by understanding the context of the user and understanding the context of the device and using both of them to enforce policies um, on, on this front. Do I need to log in? to Google Chrome with my username? Great question. Um, yeah, so definitely from our perspective, you know, obviously we're focused on the enterprise user. So uh, we do want you to log into Chrome. We do want you to use your corporate identity and not your personal identity, right? When you're accessing applications, we want you to make sure that you're, you're, you're coming in as, a Google, uh, as your corporate identity. Um, so, you know, from that perspective, if you're logging in with a, with a uh, non-corporate identity, obviously you can't access the applications, but we don't, yeah, nor, nor the, you know, do the enterprises want you to access their resource when you're coming from a personal uh, um, uh, login. Right, so our next question is quite interesting here. Usually we're asking uh, what kind of options to connect you have. Is it the clientless and client? But what's interesting in your case that it's kind of clientless and the clientless browser has the client inside. I mean, I think that's really kind of one of the key things that we're trying to do is, again, if you look at it, yeah, the question is, how do you make it super simple for users to access the resources that they need to access, right? right? I don't want you to have to go, you know, if you were to go to Best Buy and buy a computer and, and come back, you know, in minutes, can you access the resources that you want to access in a secure manner? I have right? a question about this success, right? Let's assume that I want to access a, a remote Linux machine over SSH. How would it look for me? I'm trying, you know, just to kind of try and render it in in my mind. When I'm logged into the ZTNA with the browser and I'm going to enter in my SSH client, let's say the IP address and the port of the remote host, what I'm going to provide there. Yeah, for SSH, well, actually SSH, RDP, uh, or other TCP ports, I mean, the, the, the architecture is the same. You still need to log into to your Chrome browser because that's how we actually understand and collect information about your device and, and about you as a user, right? Um, but then uh, from there, 
you can leverage SSH essentially you know, um, our G Cloud uh, tool to essentially establish a tunnel between your browser or, or sorry, I should say your machine to Google Cloud, right? So basically we're tunneling SSH over a secure connection that, uh, that we understand and that can apply context-aware policies to that. Um, it's, it's, it's really important that we talk about kind of, because we're, we're making everything go through Google because we want to make sure that every time you're trying to access the information, that we can verify and validate the policies. So if you, for example, if you're accessing a resource and then you uh, may, may have kind of, I don't know, uh, changed so that you turn off screen lock as an example. I, I'm, I'm making it you know, somewhat simple here. If you turn off screen lock and your policy requires that screen lock with password turn on is there, then, and you turn it off, we would automatically be able to validate that. And we say, hey, you know what? You know, the next access, we will not allow you because you have turned off screen, uh, screen uh, uh, lock on, in this case. So everything is automatically and continuously validated. The same thing with SSH, when you're making a connection there, you, know, you make a connection, you may be allowed once, and the next time you make a connection, you're not allowed because you may have turned off certain settings. I see. So, but my client for the SSH connection is going to be the browser, or is going to be, as example, Putty. You you can use your uh, regular SSH uh, client. Um, what we do in that case is that we would build a um, secure tunnel between your host and Google Cloud, so that you you know there's your SSH is essentially going through that tunnel. But when I'm entering the destination, let's say IP or hosting. What would I go, I'm going to provide? Yeah, in this case, you will be providing an address at, on a, uh, essentially in, in a Google infrastructure. This is the same thing that we're doing essentially for web applications as well. What you're doing essentially is you're publishing, right, a destination. So for, for example, our, for an app web application, you, when you publish it, it shows up as a Google resource. I'm going to... I'm going to piggyback on Dimitri's question about different tools. So open ports, what other ports are supported? So we mentioned SSH, what about void printing, file share? Yeah, so, so some of these things, I mean, um, from, a, from a customer's perspective, they're really focused on employee access, right? So workforce that are really either remote workforce, they're, they're out at Starbucks, they're out somewhere that, that may not be in the office. And so our solutions really focus on uh, that portion of the, the use cases. Uh, when, when you're trying to, for example, print something, typically you wouldn't, you know, you, you're probably not gonna go and, and print it all the way to, to some remote location, um, even though you know, you know, that, that, that might be a very remote use case, but we, we don't really try to uh, focus there. What we're trying to you know, focus on is the primary applications that you're trying to access. This would be your web applications. This would be SSH resources on GCP potentially. Uh, we have a lot of customers that use uh, Beyond Corp to access, for example, um, uh, to manage GCP resources or even uh, connect to their Git repositories over on AWS as an example, right? So if those I are have a fat application and a fat client on my laptop, would it able to use the routing yeah. after you establish a tunnel with Chrome? That's a great question. It, it is a use case that we plan to support. It is something that we already ha uh, have, uh, uh, it is on our roadmap that we plan to support as well. The next question is about how the solution would work on, uh, let's say, very slow networks or networks that are so slow that they're experiencing uh, timeouts and the uh, disconnections. So if I'm connected and I'm in the middle of my work, would I experience this connection to the level that I'll have to reconnect my DTNA solution and then or my remote access solution? And then I'll have to again reconnect, let's say to my SSH session. So this is where the Google network really shines, right? When you get on the Google network, there's really uh, within the Google kind of boundary, 
um, you, you have all the advantages of Google reliability and speed. Now, obviously that last leg, right, the last mile from Google to your resource, assuming that's outside of the Google uh, boundary, uh, there, there might still be uh, issues there. But when you're publishing applications and you're making access to those applications, um, it's just like accessing any web application. So if you have a slow connection over there and we can't reach it, right? Obviously, we're going to get the errors back and we, we can respond accordingly. Uh, if it's an SSH connection, um, then, uh, you know, in that case, unfortunately, you know, you, your session will probably be, be terminated. We, we obviously have some way, you know, uh, uh, from, from Google to your uh, resource, there's, uh, there's some uh, safety guard there. But at the end of the day, if it's like some of the, the, the video sessions that we have, if it's really choppy and really bad, eventually you're going to end up um, losing that connection. What about reporting or user behavior? Can Google Beyond Corp help me to understand what's happening with my organization, especially when everyone works from home? Does people consume more than what they need? Does people actually maybe do something they're not supposed to be doing? So we kind of tap into UBA. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. In fact, I mean, that's one of the areas where we, you know, because we're, we're leveraging the Chrome browser, we're actually able to see um, a lot of kind of the un, what we call the unsafe activities that are happening in, in, in the organization, right? For example, unsafe activities would include, for example, like, a, hey, somebody downloaded a piece of malware, somebody have potentially downloaded sensitive information, or they may have uploaded a piece of malware, or they have went to a phishing site. There's a lot of these things that, that are things that are happening inside your environment. And especially if you're remote, or maybe you're using a computer that's not managed by the enterprise, so you don't have the, the monitoring capabilities that you normally would have, how would you do, yeah, how would you solve those problems, right? So for us, the simple answer is, well, once, you're, once you log into Chrome and once you can access your resources, we can capture a lot of the events that we consider to be unsafe and then we, you, we provide reports to the customers. For example, a couple of uh, high level reports I can share with you is one, we can say, hey, here are the list of users that are the highest risk in your environment, right? They have performed certain type of actions. Maybe they have sent out sensitive data. Maybe uh, they have downloaded a bunch of sensitive, maybe they have went to a couple of phishing sites, right? So there's a set of users that are potentially higher risk in your environment and in your organization. You may want to go and provide them additional training. Is right? this a part of backstory or it's a di different reporting? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's two things that we can do here. Um, and one is Beyond Corp itself provides additional reporting already, right, as part of this, uh, this solution. Uh, high risk users, high risk domains. But what we do is that we also integrate with uh, Chronicle, which is the product these day, uh, they uh, renamed from uh, Backstory to Chronicle. Um, and the integration is to really allow you to do further investigation combining the Beyond Corp data with the rest of the data set that you have in your organization. Right? And that's really where the power of Chronicle comes in, is that you fuse the data from different data sources and really kind of providing you that deep investigation and detection capabilities. Can you support other uh, SIMs or forwarding uh, information to other SIM systems? Yeah, so there's a few ways to get data out of Beyond Corp today. Great question, by the way. I mean, we have a lot of customers ask us that same question. How do I get the data out? It's a rich set of data. Can I leverage it? with my SIM? And the answer is yes, right? So there's many different ways to get it out. You can do, uh, we, we provide, for example, uh, an API that you can pull the data out, right? Google Cloud is all about API. So you can, you know, you can, you can pull the data as much, you know, as often as, uh, as you want. Um, the other thing is that we can, you know, uh, also dump the data out to BigQuery. We have a lot of customers that use BigQuery as also one way to kind of run reports and things like that. You can dump it out. You can run very, very all. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, we have tools that allow, that sit on top of the query that allows you to do things like that as well, right? Chronicle is, you know, is also one of those uh, uh, tools. 
So different ways of getting the data out, different ways of kind of, you know, depending on the tool you want, right? Um, but what we want, we, we don't, you know, Beyond Corp is not a sim, obviously, right? We want to capture the information. We want to give it to you, however you want to kind of merge that and fuse that with the tools that you have. That's what we want you to do. We are actually done with the official part of the show and we kind of move, move to free conversation. We have a couple of questions and I know you also want to share some other information. I have one question before. What about browsers that are Chrome-based, like Edge or Chromium? Would they also work or it has to be Chrome? Yeah, great question. Um, what we want to do, again, you know, our, our whole goal out of this, whole, you know, this, this product is to make it super simple for you to have secure and safe access. So if we can have a fully integrated solution that allows you to access without having to install agents or anything like that, that's the approach that we want to take. So today, um, the full capability is realized within the Chrome browser. Again, you download Chrome, you install Chrome, you log in, you access the information. Five minutes after you buy your computer from Best Buy, and that's what you need. What that's what you can do, right? Um, so uh, the full stack of capability is integrated, you know, with Chrome, with the Google network, and with Google Cloud. Right. So the three things that we talked about in the beginning, browser, network, cloud, is, uh, is the, in, the full integrated solution that, that you can leverage. And, and it works for not just your employees, right? There's a, a lot of organizations. We have companies that have hundreds of thousands of uh, users as their extended workforce. Uh, by extended for workforce, I, I mean uh, folks like contractors. Right, folks that are potentially your frontline workers, uh, folks that potentially are um, that well, actually employees using potentially their personal devices. Right, none of these cases they would have corporate managed devices, and we want to make that use case super simple. Gotcha. You mentioned that there's other capabilities that are related not to remote access, but related to outbound part. And you guys basically cover more of the SASE framework, such as ZTNA. Can you tell us more about this part? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the question. Um, so when we launched Beyond Corp Enterprise in January, one of the key set of capabilities that we incorporated into, into the product is uh, a set of capabilities we call threat and data protection. So, um, Essentially, what we wanted to be able to do is, while the user is securely accessing their, their information, we want to make sure that uh, we can prevent uh, malicious or, or unintentional data exfiltration, right? So that's one thing. So DLP is built directly into the Chrome browser. Uh, we want to prevent malicious downloads, which means that if you have... Uh, you go to some, some website and it happens to be a malware that you're downloading. We have essentially a full set of capabilities here where we do signature checks, static analysis, and also a cloud sandbox capability where you can do, where we can do dynamic analysis. So a full uh, malware uh, detection and prevention set of capabilities. And then finally from a, uh, obviously, you know, users use Chrome browser, they're not just accessing corporate resources, they're going all over the internet to access other resources and websites as well. We wanna make sure that these employees are protected when they're accessing the internet. So we also have obviously phishing and malicious URL filtering built into the uh, browser and doing that check in real time, right? So these are key capabilities that wanna make sure from a uh, user access perspective, not only are they accessing resources securely, but they're also protected while they're accessing those resources. Um, maybe a couple data points here. Um, from, from a threat data protection perspective, we're leveraging uh, Google's safe browsing capability. Safe browsing today protects about, I say, 4 billion devices worldwide. So we do see a lot of, you know, uh, uh, kind of phishing sites and, and malware sites and things like that, right? We can leverage that and really kind of help protect the users. I, at least on my side, have one last question. What if a customer has a different outbound solution? 
maybe it's uh, I want to. There's multiple, multiple vendors that do outbound. We covered them in season one. How does this work together? Great, completely interoperable, right? I mean, for, from from Google's perspective, we know that customers sometimes already have some other solutions for specific use cases, right? So from our solution, again, when we publish an application, it looks just like another application on the internet. It just looks like a SaaS application. So if you have another solution that's doing uh, maybe employee protection and whatnot, it's com- you know, you know, they see the uh, application that Google publishes as just another web application, and they can you know they can protect it just the way that they normally would. Um, and from the Chrome perspective, again, we um, we see it you know any 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 type of uh, proxy based solution as an example is just another proxy. You know, Chrome works it. You know, a lot of people, two billion users already use it, right? And a lot of users will go through those proxies anyway. So uh, so both on the client side as well as on, on the cloud side, uh, it's completely interoperable. Any questions to ask before we wrap up? No, this is great. I mean, really appreciate the opportunity uh, to share some of the, the work that we've been doing. Our goal here is, again, really make it simple for users and, and customers to be able to protect uh, access uh, to, to resources in, in a much simpler way. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you. Please remember to subscribe to our podcast and join us for our next episode.